dusty little hipsters. Today we're going to be doing these struts on both sides of this here van. This here van has been sitting for quite a while, like close to a year. And it's pretty nasty in the rotor, the caliper, but the brakes do work. I drove it like this because I have no regard for my personal safety. Um, but you can see that uh, it's possible that the, these pads will clean up these rotors, but I don't think it really matters because I'm going to replace that anyway, almost certainly. That's just, I mean, I'm all about half ass and shit, but not that much. Hey, what a shock, that's 12. So, I don't know how, I have another video on this job uh, on the channel from many years ago, almost five years ago now, and it, it shows some things uh, and some important things, but it does not show does not show um what doesn't it show it doesn't show how you get the act this actually the strut in and out the basic guts of it in case i don't i miss some part of filming are we're going to pull the rotor we're going to pull the tie rod end we're going to pull the the uh caliper off and hang it to the side all that's just to make this a little neater we do not need to remove the axle then we're going to remove the ball joint and once you loosen the strut assembly, there's a, a e-socket back here and another bolt, then this piece is free to slide out of the top of, top of this, if you can see. Uh, well, here, I've got a light on my head, if you can see. And with this being out and the ball joint being out, this whole knuckle assembly is gonna come off. So, uh, and at that point, I'm able to go inside, remove the fuse box, and get to the top three strut bolts, unbolt the strut, bolt the new strut cartridge in. That refers to the strut, the shock, the spring, and the swivel at the top of the whole Megillah. And like so. Uh, I will make rude comments as I go along, but I, I feel like the images will, will tell you what I'm doing more than my stupid talking will tell you what I'm doing. I've seen this done on YouTube where you don't take the caliper or rotor off but it makes this whole knuckle assembly a little bit more unwieldy because it's just heavier and it wants to fall and you don't want it to put stress on the CV joint if it falls forward and blah, blah, blah. So I'm just gonna go start unbolting the shit out of shit. Let's see how I do. I'm gonna start by the locating pins here on the rotor, which are 12s. and hopefully they come out. If they break, it's not the end of the world. All these pins do, all these pins do is, is pilot the wheel on, gives you a place to set the wheel as you put it on. Paul has thoughtfully added some squirrel piss, as it is known in the industry, and I am gonna squirrel piss as best I can all the bolts that are gonna need to come off, because, uh, you know, traditional. This van, pretty certain this shit's never been apart because the van only has 170 on it or some, and uh, also I see that it's undercoated and it would have been disturbed. So, and I've already stuck the goddamn bolt into the socket and can't get it out. You know, uh, you know what you do when you do that? When you can't get it out, you re-thread it a little bit and use that to hold it while you pull. By the way, while we're making this entertaining with more dick jokes, only a fool doesn't put his shit in a mag tray because why would you ever go hunting for parts? Don't you have better things to do than hunt around for parts? Unlike most mechanics, I don't like the Ugga Dugga air tool gun. I'm just not into air tools. I hate the lines. I just hate all that shit. I'm a man filled with hate when it comes to air tools. I got a special tool. Although many who know me personally will tell you I am a special tool. Here's my special tool, kids. What you got here, here is a uh, hex of size... 14, this is what's gonna release the caliper.
<laughs> you could take the caliper off last, but if everything's loose, you're going to be hosed. Like I say, the, the expensive air tools will get this off, or the expensive electrics. But uh, I'm old school, bitches. <clears throat> and I, I enjoy suffering. <sighs> All right, you little freaks. So hopefully you can see what I got going on back here. These two are the 14 millimeter Allens for the caliper. And once I take those off, you can beat the caliper off. Ooh, and, and hang it out of the way with a wire or something. The basic gimmick here is that uh, with the this whole assembly, which some people will call the knuckle, others would call it the spindle. I would call it the knuckle. Ugh. You can uh, then get this whole knuckle to drop out of the way, and that leaves the strut free to come out. It, it separates it from the strut assembly itself, or strut cartridge. Did we talk about cartridge? So a strut, technically the strut is uh, just the shock portion of the thing, because it's made of basically three sections, four, I guess. The shock portion, which looks like a shock absorber, the coil spring, which looks like a coil spring, the swivel at the top, which looks like a plate that's on ball bearings, and then the structure. There's some other structure to it, not much, though. But basically, that whole assembly, those three important pieces, are collectively known as a strut cartridge in my parlance. Others may call it something else. Um, and I prefer, you can buy all three of those pieces individually and take the whole thing out, put it in a giant spring compressor, replace the swivel or replace the spring or replace the shock. But I find that to be not only too much work, if you buy that shit from Chrysler, it's like, I don't know, 600 bucks a side. Whereas the aftermarket, mainly Monroe, Bilstein, a few other ones, some off-brand stuff, they take the factory ones and rebuild them. They put a new swivel on, they put a new sh uh, shock absorber portion in, and the spring, they just inspect it. It rarely goes bad. It's a spring. It doesn't know what to do. So, and then they, they put those three together and they put it in a box and they call that a cartridge. That whole thing is, I think, still, as of this writing, around 180 bucks, uh, possibly much less on Rock Auto, although shipping will be somewhat expensive because they come in a three-foot box and they weigh a lot. My personal feeling is that I, I'm going to be dead soon and I don't have time to be building struts in order to, to use all factory parts or, or get excited. I, would, I personally would rather do the job twice every 300,000 miles than it to take twice as long. And also, it's important to keep in mind that probably as you move down the budget range into the really cheap shit, it's probably junk or junkier than the factory stuff, but the cost and time savings is enough to justify it. And further, we have put the crap, and, and also importantly, it's all just rebuilt factory stuff anyway. They take it apart, they clean it, they paint it, they put it back together with what needs to be new, and that's it. It's more remanufactured than rebuilt, I suppose. I have found in my experience that struts go to, in like more city use, as opposed to country use, as opposed to highway use. Struts will last somewhere between 100 and 150,000 miles. So it's not like we're doing this every week. Oh good, the rotor is loose. So, <clears throat> The, the savings by putting in the, the most premium shit you can find is not, uh, is not necessarily uh, the most cost-effective use of your time and money. Although, who the fuck knows? It may be. I don't know what you people do for fun. That said, we've seen a couple of times struts come in that have been, like, super premium, where I don't know where the hell the guy got it. Some of that off-road stuff, some of that... Um, Sumo stuff, they sell a cartridge, I believe. I know they sell the portions of it. They also sell an insert that goes between the coil spring coils and boosts the spring rate of the thing. Uh, Sumo, S-U-M-O. And that's all good stuff. I like that stuff. I will also say we had a van come in here once. This was quite some time ago where the dude had used some kind of aftermarket something or other and lifted the thing like Two inches, three inches. That was that dude's green van from Michigan. The spray pack. Yeah, that spray that spray liner van thing, and that was really cool. I mean, it looked all off roady and everything. The problem with that was, holy shit, was it a bitch to get all that stuff apart? Because with the with the 
lifted stuff, everything's under more tension and it required much more sweating, cursing, and gnashing of teeth. I did not enjoy that. We fought with that van quite a bit. My, I, I, I am not here to give you off-road van advice other than what the fuck are you doing driving an off-road va a van off-road? Which would be my advice, don't do that. But, uh, hand that here. Mostly, mostly limiting myself to, to stop. By the way, Paul is, is doing the other side while I do this side. Because we're going to be using all the same tools. Now I'm going to show you how to swing a caliper. By the way, while I'm just blathering, what you're seeing in your video is uh, a van with 170,000 miles that's lived its whole life in Ohio. This particular van does uh, what's usually known as vocational work. This guy's a tile guy, I believe. Tile or, or, or flooring or something. And so it has lived a hard life. I'm looking at the probably blinding you. It's time for pads too. It's probably time for a caliper. If this caliper doesn't retract, we're replacing the calipers as well. But that's that's neither here nor there. That's a video for, for a different day. For today, we're gonna see if I can just get this up with my mechanics wire out of the way. Just so it's not in my way, and I'm not putting too much stress on any particular part of it. Let's get back at it. Now, while we're here, while you're here, I'm gonna show you something real special. Can you see everything? Okay. Oh, that's lovely. Should have done that to start with. Okay, all right. This is my world, rolling around on the floor under vans. Okay, this guy here is the tie rod end and it does the steering. This piece that I am pointing to is connected to your uh, steering rack. And as you turn the thing, it, it pulls this way or pushes this way, and it turns the whole megillah right and left. This tie rod end uh, is attached there. Now, hopefully, if all goes well, which it rarely does. Is that a 21? No, it's a 24. Not really. Is there such thing as a 22 in this world in which we live in, to quote Paul McCartney? There is such a thing. This van is coated with under undercoating, and that is why this 22, which is what this bolt is, doesn't quite fit. But you know what? I can fix that. I can fix that with violence. The right tool for the right job, kids. When in doubt, beat on it. There we go. What's happened there? I have pierced the veil of the undercoating. This is, a, is an electric impact gun, and it's not going to get this bolt loose, but it may uh, jar it enough to help me when I go to do it manually. Ready? I, I, I fucking stand corrected. All right, remember what we learned before? There's a little review. See that? Do that. Why wouldn't you do that? Okay, now, here's what I wanted to show you, because this is a specialty tool. The way you would get this Megillah off is obviously it, it goes up through the, through the bore here and it comes out. But once you start beating on this with a hammer, you, you, you tend to want to do damage and so on. There's an easier way, which is this. This is a sub $20 Harbor Freight. It usually comes in a kit of three of various sizes. I believe you can understand how it works. That's making that bigger. It's, I want to see if I can, yeah, yeah, I can show you. Slides over like that. Goes up like that. Is it a 17 on this end? No. You know, a better mechanic than I knows the sizes of these things just by looking at them or rubbing his scrotum across them. They can sense those. Now, when I do this, when I... Oh, I want to tighten. When I tighten this, it's going to... It's going to look like nothing's happening. Then all of a sudden, it's going to fly off of there. And then you get a little cotton candy maker when you're done. Isn't that nice? All right. So now that the tie rod end is out and can hang there, now, of course, I can put the this whole assembly wherever the fuck I want. 
And wherever the fuck I want is this way so I can get to this other ball joint bolt. Don't get, stay in school, kids. Don't get fat. Okay, here, I would think you could see pretty easily how the pinch bolt works. You can see, kids, I assume, how this pinch bolt arrangement works. This is part of, this piece is part of the upper strut and that guides it down and there's a bolt here and an E-socket, which is an inverted torque here. And I believe that is not the bottom of the, uh, maybe it is, maybe it is, but it doesn't matter because around the front here, ah, there's my hat, around the front here is this piece, which stops it. It tells it how deep it can go. Okay, you ready? Yep. Strip. Hard to say. This is the pinch bolt, one of the pinch bolts for that side. This is an E22. And the other side of it is a 22. That's pretty good engineering. Thank you, Fiat. You're welcome for our help during the war, by the way. All right, and the other side's not even spinning. So, you know, that's something. By the way, many of you think professional mechanics are sissies for using so many power tools, but you do this all day, every day. Each repetition is just carpal waiting to happen. Remember, when in doubt. Oh, but Kip, how am I going to get that out of there? Yeah. Well, I'm just going to keep playing with it. Until you figure out something, something like that. Money shot. All right, so what have we done? Let's recap. Tie rod end is off. Knuckle is loose. Ball joint three bolts are out. The only thing holding this Megillah in, the Megillah being the knuckle, uh, that's a Yiddish word for craziness, um, is uh, the, the spring is still pushing down on the lower control arm. So if I were to put my bar in, as you've seen me do in other videos, you should see me do here quite helpful to you. We have a long bar that's much, much beefier than this pry tool, but it will go in there, which is a hole in the lower control arm, and then we'll, we'll pull down, and we should get enough clearance to separate the bottom of this, the cup that the ball joint seats into, so that this is free swinging. And once it is, it'll break free from this surface, because it's just sitting in there, nothing's holding it in there and we should be able to get this thing off. But I'm gonna take a little break and scratch my nuts for a bit. All right, this part is something fun we didn't talk about. This little piece is your brake pad wear sensor. Is it? Yes, it's your brake pad wear sensor. And it just, this little grommet slides into a slot in the back. But this piece is your brake line, and I see that it is held in by a little clip. Now it's funny, I've every time I've done this, I've, I haven't seen this clip before which tells me this van is fairly, fairly new. So this is also a new one on me. How the hell does that come out? It wants to go like that, or does it want to go up? Remember at all times that a screwdriver is more than just for driving screws. 
You can pick your teeth with it. You can pick your ass with it. You can eat food with it. You can stab seafood with it. You can use it as a, but in this context, you can use it as a chisel, a hammer, a pry bar, a, a pry tool. You could touch yourself in an impure manner with it. You could use it to verify how much you like gay sex. Never mind. Too far with a metaphor. Because this piece is attached to the strut, and when the strut goes, this has to come off. So, so surely, surely there is a non-figurative way to do that, and it goes like that. Okay. All right. I could add at this point, which I probably should have done earlier, just in the the, the interest of clarity. Nothing is holding the rotor on right now. Those little guide pins that we took out, those actually pin the rotor to the. Uh, I suppose you'd call it the hub or the flange or the bearing surface or whatever the hell you call it behind it. But there's no reason not to take this rotor off because I, I don't know, but I'm thinking about replacing this. So uh, this thing is going to be probably seized on pretty tight because there'll be corrosion around this ring. Hopefully I don't have to fight with this too much. Looks like I do. And that excites me. While we're here for edumacational purposes, this is called your dust shield. This one looks like it's been beat on a little bit, but who hasn't? Very often, a squeaking brake situation will be caused by this because it's, it's bent into the rotor or it's near to touching or some such. Very simple, two bolts, one, two, three bolts, hold it on. You could delete it, it's a splash shield is all it is and it is named as such. This line here, which is secured with one bolt going into the bearing itself is the wheel speed sensor. Uh, yeah, there's not much to see. So also known as your ABS sensor, uh, also known as your wheel speed sensor. Super simple how it works. There's a series of um, bumps, for lack of a better term, or teeth on the bearing itself. And this is just a magnet, it's called a Hall effect sensor. And it just reads fluctuation when the tip of the sensor is, is near a hump or near a lack of hump. Something I know quite a bit about in my old age, the lack of hump. Anyway, moving on, dick jokes aside, uh, they don't really go bad as such, except if the bearing goes bad, it'll eat up the sensor, or usually it's the wiring to it if, the, if you lose wheel speed sensing. But that would fire your ABS light, it would eliminate your traction control, and in this particular vehicle, it will disable the cruise control because the van doesn't want you to just be cruising at 70 miles an hour towards an accident while sliding. This is essentially how the van determines if the wheels are sliding or gripping or spinning or whatever the hell they're doing. So it disables the cruise control. So then you coast into the tree. Over here, broken, as in almost every ProMaster, is this is the what would have been the line to the brake pad wear sensor, which is just a little piece of wire that lives in the brake pad itself. And when the brake pad wears low enough, the wire wears out and grounds out and lights the light. I have to be honest, I have never, ever seen this work correctly on the ProMaster. You can cut the line, it won't fire the light. The pads can be worn, it won't fire the light. The pads can be new and it won't fire the light. You could leave it out, you could stick it up your ass and it won't fire the light. That doesn't mean that that's gospel, but I've just never seen it work as intended. Get right in here where the action's at. Why would you want to be where the action's not at? Okay, so that is the sticker on your, this would be the original strut. I know that, made in USA, gas pressurized, if it has a Chrysler part number on it. Um, and I'm rather surprised this is made in USA. You would think this would be European, but it isn't. The And it also says COFAP, which is a dick joke in and unto itself. I've never bothered to read this barcode. I have no idea what would come up. But what what's interesting to me is that this is a Chrysler part number that ends in AD. So this particular part went through four revisions to get to the, the last digit, D. I would also add as a point of information, if you get a choice of, of gas charge struts versus oil charge struts, which should you choose? I would go with oil. Generally, oil is higher quality. To sum up, the three uh, ball joint bolts from the bottom are out. The sway bar or the tie rod end is out, obviously. You can hear that this was the bad strut. Although that sound doesn't necessarily indicate it's bad, but this one happens to be bad, I can tell you. Um, and many people like to replace them in pairs. That's up to you. 
Uh, anyway, Paul's gonna pull down and I'm gonna release the, and also the, um, the pinch bolt is out of the back. So I'm gonna release the uh, knuckle here or spindle, and then I'm gonna beat on it with a hammer and this should come straight down. So go ahead, I'll give it some down. Okay, you can come up. Now that should be ready to release. You gotta, the thing you gotta take care of is the ABS sensor here because if this falls, I mean, it can't fall out because the axle's holding it in, but you, as, the, as the strut comes out, you don't want to tear that. Dropper. ready to fall so be ready for it okay come up you can come all the way up okay now my job is to figure out a place to put this so it can't fall it can sit like that good i have a bungee cord but that's pretty sturdy actually and that's not overly stressing the axle and that's that by the way what this would look like is any pointy stick that you can get in, I suppose I could show you this, you know, just to be nice. What I'm actually looking at here is this hole in the control arm, this round hole above the uh, sway bar. You just put anything in there and, and pull down. On both sides, it's done to the rear of the opening and, uh, and like so. All right, now my task is to go inside and remove the um, uh, body control module and, uh, and or fuse box and release the three nuts that, and then this will just drop straight down. I'm going to be quite careful to make sure it doesn't fall and stab that, but you get the idea. All right, more coming. Okay, well, here we are. Um, this is pretty straightforward, and who knows, I may edit this out, in which case you're not hearing this, so it's not gonna mean anything to you. This panel, the I would call this the kick panel, but it's just the lower dash panel. It's gonna come out as is that. Once that's out, then the fuse box comes out and the body control module with it. And there's a couple of connectors on the back. I have also disconnected the battery. Not that it would do any harm, but it, it just seems like bad policy to be unplugging computers while the battery's connected. There's one, there's one here, one here, one here. And I think there's just some clips at the bottom. I'm less dumb than I look. You always find candy. There's a nail file. Looks like a uh, wet wipe. There's one. There's two. Me. Oh, there's one little extra piece here. One little baby piece. You know, when you do this yourself and you lose these or they strip out, they're not really very sturdy. Everything still kind of works. These, these, I forgot about this. These, uh, these connectors, they overarch and then they click into the last spot and that's what allows it to release. It's kind of a low strength two stage two or even I guess it's a three stage lock if you think about it body control module that's your entire computer system right there basically whoa all right let me show you what I'm seeing is the top of the swivel hopefully hopefully you're catching that one two and one in the back 16 millimeter bolts and it also if I can show you has these little spikes see this spike sticking up here right there so that locates it. You can see that on the one going in, quite plainly. There, that is what it looks like. And there's the spike on the other side. You can see the two up on there. That piece goes up and the three bolts hold it and with a ring in between. So I'm gonna loosen those. And then the gimmick will be to, this is a two man operation. I have yet to figure out how to do this with one man. 
Once the last bolt comes out, that's gonna wanna fall. I'm gonna grab it, take it out, put the new one in. And the hardest part of this whole thing, I suppose, is turning the new strut going in so that these alignment uh, pyramids line up and um, and then the and then the regular holes will line up. And also this plate will be loose when you do it. So it's a jigsaw puzzle, but in the end of the world. All right, here we go. That is it. It is up. All right, kitties, here's our new one. You can see the pins I was talking about. And so on. It goes in as you're doing it. Of course, you can just visualize this, but the two pins are on this face, so that's how it goes in. But what's important is that the blade of the where the pinch bolt goes goes in the back, goes rearward. And then you really can't do it wrong. However, this is more muscle than yours truly really does. There's a way to kind of balance it up on your knee, but it is always a finagle to do this because I am totally blind. How's that? Okay. All right, this kids is gonna be the hardest part. It's always the hardest part, which is getting the, I don't know if you can see, hold on, getting the slot to mate up to the bottom of this, of, of the strut, and seat or otherwise do its thing at the ball joint. So this is why you might have thought to remove the rotor, because it's going to be very difficult for the rotor. Be careful where your knee is. Yeah, I know. Okay, come up. There we go. Got it. All right, let go. this point um, you can see that we're fully seated there we're in the slot in the back the, the pinch tab this is fine we're back in the ball cup I don't know if it's gonna show but we're in the ball cup on the bottom which means we still have plenty of play to line these up although they're lined up currently but they probably wouldn't thread the rest of this is not really worth showing install the pinch bolt make it as tight as you dare install the three ball joint bolts reinstall oh i did want to talk about this um about the tie rod end a little bit of uh, things to say about when i go to reinstall the uh tie rod end obviously it sits there and it it moves because that's what it does so you put it down through the hole and then you put this nut on the other side but what happens is this whole shaft starts spinning because this is all potted in rubber and thing and and you put enough force on it and this will start spinning. It won't hold solid because because otherwise it, it wouldn't be able to articulate like it does. The fix for that was already built in. You'll note that the bottom of it has a Allen wrench thing, which I believe is a six. So you'll put this in and you'll use an open, can we see that well? You'll put this in and you'll use an open end wrench to get up around that. And you'll use this to hold it still. You may have to, around with various permutations of where it is because it's going to want to spin uh, the seats down like that and this will and you use the long arm out here I've got it in there now and you'll you'll jam it with your foot or you can put a bar on it you risk breaking this but it's just a chance you got to take the torque for this I don't have the spec handy it just all it has to do is not fall out because as you can see the the seat is tapered so, and the force on this thing is only taken up in the steering axis, uh, would be Y as we look at it right here. But anyway, all, it just needs to not fall out. And of course, they vibrate and they get rusty and they're prone to 
it's I suppose rattling free, but it's a pretty pretty tight fit, and I believe is that a nylon? Yes, there's a nylon race at the top of there. So I mean, you ain't got to worry about it too much, but th that, that's why you can't get it. And that the same would go for getting it off. If you go to spin that bolt and the the whole you can see the whole shaft turning, you're gonna need to hold it still with a six or a seven. I suppose I should put this information in. Why should you have to hunt six six mil millimeter? So so there's your answer. There you little freaks. All right, let's uh, wrap it up then. I did not show the reassembly because it's just not that interesting. I guess I kind of shortchanged you on the connectors that go on the body control module, but I'm hoping you'll be able to figure that out. It's all pretty straightforward. Most of them have those overarching arms. You push in at the top, it releases it. You push the arm back till it clicks. Just be gentle and you'll be all right. Uh, you need to reconnect the battery. Oh, I have the torque specs in front of me for all this stuff. I don't use a torque wrench on this because it's just too unwieldy to get it under there. I go by feel. But when you hear these numbers, you'll you'll get an idea what the feel is. So the three ball joint bolts, 96 foot-pounds. The uh, brake caliper bolt, 125 foot-pounds. That's a pretty good chunk. Uh, the strut, uh, yeah, the pinch bolt, 129 the three 16 millimeter bolts at the top of the strut, 41, which is not crazy tight. And lastly, the tie rod, yeah, the tie rod, 66 foot pounds or 61, depending, but you know, not crazy tight. It just has to not fall out of there. Okay. The one thing I didn't show you, it occurs to me, was getting the few, uh, the, the glove box out on the passenger side to get to the access to the top of the strut. I'm going to show you that now from the previous video we made many years ago. Looks like with the dash out, with the glove box out rather, which you need to to get to the top of the bearing mount for the strut. So that's what, six bolts? Six small hex or uh, torx no bolts One, to get the- One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, six. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, not too tough there. And that's about it. This job, books at 3.8 hours via all data, which means that at your average shop, you'd be about 400 some bucks ish, depending in labor. And, uh, and like so, and that's about it. I'm assuming you're smart enough to figure out how to put it all back together. If you don't disturb the tie rod end, you will not have to do an alignment after you put this back together. But if you do do an alignment, it's, you only have to adjust the toe and you can do it with a tape measure. That's how we do it. I don't have a $30,000 alignment machine for these ridiculous vans. Okay, well, that's a lot. That was a long video. I'm tired just editing it. Made me tired. And uh, we'll see you next time. That's a start to finish. I like to find more time in my life to do more of these start to finish videos. And I realize that they're kind of involved and boring and mostly me making dick jokes. But things get learned when they can be seen. And that's how you do it. You film the whole damn thing. And if you have to fast forward through it, that's your damn problem. Not my damn problem, you damn bastards. All right. I love you. Let's hug. Let's cuddle. Let's touch your tips. Goodbye. He's a goddamn lovely man.